Welcome to our discussion of UML state diagrams. State machines are used to describe the sequential phases of a system or agent is in. They are most frequently used in artificial intelligence for games to describe the thought process of an agent. Each stage represents an agent's current frame of mind and how it will respond to events in the system. Usually these states represent a phase with some duration and not normally just an instantaneous action. In terms of agents, a state might represent an animation, which would obviously have a duration. The machine itself starts with this system of states and then defines what are acceptable transitions between states. Under what conditions can these transitions occur? What actions are taken before, during, and after a transition? And where does the machine start and end? States are visualized using rounded rectangles. States are named using either verb or noun phrases that describe the state of mind of the agent or system. Good examples would be idle, wandering, guarding, or eating. Transitions describe how the agent moves from state to state and under what conditions that transition is possible. Simple transitions are arrows from the current state to the next state. Additional information can be added to the transition describing the event that triggers the transition, the condition that must be true to allow the condition, and any actions taken when transitioning. The event is added as plain text the guard in square brackets, and the methods called following a slash. All three of these descriptors are optional, but usually at least the event or guard are used to indicate why the transition occurs. Every state machine must have a start state. This is indicated using a solid dot and an unconditional transition. Usually this would indicate in which state the agent starts upon creation. State machines can optionally have an end state, indicated by a dot with an extra border around it. While most agents or systems would have an end state, such as the agent dying or the system exiting, it is not always relevant or important to indicate this. States can be further explored by adding information about what actions are taken when entering the state or leaving the state. These are added below the name of the state using the keywords entry and exit, followed by a slash and the methods or actions taken. These can be thought of as a setup and cleanup for the state. Here, we see the attack player state equips the weapon when we enter the state and then unequips the weapon when we leave the state. In certain circumstances, state machines can get very large or complex. A reasonably sized state machine might have 25 or fewer nodes, but for a complex game like StarCraft or chess, our state machine would get very large and we might find it useful to group states together into superstates or subsystems. We can simply use the same curved rectangle to represent the superstate with a set of substates within it. Usually we'd have a single enter or exit point for the superstate, and the substates should be relatively independent of the rest of the system. Otherwise, you get no benefit from grouping them together. For example, a guard on patrol may have a superstate called patrol that describes a sequence of behaviors such as move to a point, pause to look around, pause to listen, and then repeat. Since each of these states may have their own animation and are all related, it, may, it makes sense to group them into a superstate. Let's look at a simple guard. I've used Visual Studio's activity diagram, so the visuals are slightly different, but that's okay. At the beginning of the game, the guard begins to patrol an area. At the beginning of his patrol action, he computes a patrol path and then patrols along that path. When he sees the player, he transitions into the approach state where he moves into a position where he is close enough to fire at the player with some reasonable chance of success. Once the player is in range, the guard transitions into the attack player state where he equips his weapon and fires. If he kills the player, he returns to patrol. If the player leaves his attack range, he unequips his weapon and returns to the approach player state where he chases the player down. If the player at some point escapes the guard's vision, the guard gives up and returns to patrolling. While all of these behaviors are documented in this state machine, it is also important to understand what the guard cannot do in this system. He cannot initiate an attack directly from patrolling. He must first transition into the approach player state. However, this state can be very short if the player is already in attack range. He also can't initiate an attack without a weapon since transitioning into the attack player state requires a weapon to be equipped. The goal of every state machine is to document the agent's reaction to all possible events. If no events occur that the agent can respond to, the agent remains in that same state until such an event occurs. There are also events that are not handled by the state machine. For example, what if the player dies when the guard is approaching him? What should the guard do? 
Depending on the game's implementation, one of several possible things could happen. If the player's body disappears, then the guard will eventually notice the player's body disappear and return to patrolling. But what if that takes a while? The guard may not realize the player is dead and may move into the attack player state, equip his weapon, and then realize that the player is dead, unequip his weapon, and return to patrolling. This might not look very intelligent. However, what if the player's body never disappears? The guard may attack the dead body, which would look really dumb. Here is where a state machine can help you think through your AI logic. It can help you account for every single event that would impact the agent's decision-making process and plan a response to each of them. Unfortunately, Visual Studio doesn't actually have a state machine diagram, but we can use activity diagrams and they're close enough. For states, use the action tool. If you double click on the action, you can edit the action's description. Put the name of the state here. If you use shift enter, you can move down to the next line to add entry or exit actions to the state as necessary. For transitions, use the connector tool. This one is a little bit more annoying to edit, but if you either right click on the connector or just click into the properties window for the connector, you can edit the guard property and add your event, guard condition, and methods here. They will show up in square brackets along the connector, but that's okay, it's close enough. Use the initial node and the activity final node to represent the start and end states of your diagram. Now let's put these state machines to good use by documenting our Pong game manager. Think about the states of the game manager. At the highest level, the game manager must create the game itself. It must then set up the game for a single match. It must then play the game, and then it must recognize the end of the game. Each of these could be super states as there are several actions taken inside of each of them. For example, to set up the game, the game manager must position the ball in the center of the screen, position the paddles, set the score to zero, and display the start message. Once the game starts, the game manager moves into the play game state, where it must handle the player's input, check collisions, and adjust the score appropriately. Finally, when a winner is detected, the game manager moves into the end game state where a winner is declared and then it moves back into the setup game state. If we define our setup game state correctly, we can reuse it to restart a new match without going through the process of actually creating a new ball and paddle, which would be a waste of time since we already have these. I've specifically left out a few actions from this list. What are they? How will you add them into your state machine appropriately? Also, not all of these are necessarily states. Some of these are actions associated with the entry or the exit of a state. Some of them represent transitions. Some of them even represent guards on transitions. You need to pick the appropriate place to document each of these actions for the Pong game manager.